Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to uh, WLBU's only pro wrestling talk show of wonder. Yes. And of course, I'm talking about our show. Yes, then, now, whenever. Then? Now. Whatever. I'm glad that you still wore the shirt from uh, the shows we watch. They uh, talked about Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Thank you. And uh, my man Sean. Uh, Sean Michael. That's uh, me. He uh, bought a very nice uh, thrift store uh, Will Smith Santa hat sweatshirt deal. It is glorious. It's wonderful. Worth going to the Facebook and checking out if you're just listening to this on WWE. The best $8 I've spent in a clothing store. It's real good. Period. Now, uh, uh, Jesse, I, I have to... Wasn't it you? Uh, it was, was it you that found this? No, no, you found that. Wait, did, I thought you and Mindy found this and showed it to me. Somebody mm -hmm. brought this to me. I didn't find this on my own, I think. No, no, when, when I got there, you already had it. So I have no idea who found that for you. Well, it, it was magical. Was it God himself? It must have been. It, did, he, did he come down to... Uh... It must have been. <laughs> and he was like, Karen, why are there so many pens? Mm. Or pen caps and no pens. Yes. Anyway. Yes. All right, so um, we've, uh, we've had a great couple of weeks, and I have to tell you, yes. um, I have uh, uh, Clicky Von Wheeler's moniker for the week. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be great. Excellent. Um, so later on tonight... That's good. I had not thought ahead that far. Yeah, well, so I didn't either. Good. It just kind of came to me. That's the way. That's the best way. Yep. So later on tonight, um, uh, you know, we, we use Clicky Von Wheeler to, to choose our topic for, for each week um, here. And uh, later on tonight, uh, the White Tornado, Clicky Von Wheeler, nice. will be uh, selecting our next topic. That one, that one might have to stick. Uh, it's I, real good. You're right? Yeah. So, uh, but tonight, tonight we're going to talk about the infamous um, uh, faction from eight years ago, um, and that, that of course, uh, you know, will be the Nexus, uh, and yes. specifically Wade Barrett will be talking about. Yes, we're um, going to focus in on Wade Barrett this week. The Nexus is going to stay on the wheel. We are going to go back there. Almost everybody from the Nexus went on to do big, big things in WWE, and also Michael Tarver was there. Yeah, he, he, he yeah. was there. And, um, yeah, yeah, you know who else, uh, uh, he wasn't here last week. Hey, but is, uh, is, is Greg here? I don't, I don't know. Is Greg? Is it, hello? Is wait. Greg? Greg? What? <laughs> Greg? Greg? When you see that Greg, yeah, coming down the street, <laughs> yeah, you know that he has <laughs> yeah. something of what? a treat, yeah. Or maybe it's just Greg. Okay. All right, hang on. I had the Greg signal go off. I had to. I had to respond. <laughs> oh my God, Greg! Hey, hey, Greg! Hey! Here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. There was all kinds of chaos just now. <laughs> Greg almost just died getting into his seat. Very nice. That's that's what I was going for. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Greg, welcome welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me back. It's a pleasure to be here. It is great to see you again. Yes. How's, uh, how's everything been uh, over the last 20 years? Over the last 20 years? Yes, since you've been here. Good, good. You know, I started an IRA, <laughs> just, uh, had a couple of careers. Yeah? Yeah, that hasn't been too bad. A well, few you career. A few yeah. careers. You are making making that work. Rise and grind. Yeah. <laughs> Rise and grind. <laughs> and never give up. That's what John Cena says. Yeah. He has it on a towel, so it's true. Oh my gosh. Towels. Towels uh, are proof. But uh, no, we've got a we've got a great show uh, for you tonight. And uh, as we were saying, um, so do you know anything about the Nexus? Are you familiar with? The I'm not Nexus? familiar with the Nexus even a little bit. For how little I knew about the last guy we talked about, I know like negative amounts of. I didn't even know Wade Barrett was a thing. Did you know Will Smith was his thing? I'm aware of Will Smith. I'm aware of Will Smith. If you're not sure of what Will Smith looks like, this is it. Yeah, it's an accurate representation of Will yeah. Smith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also uh, 80 cell phones and mixtapes. Mm -hmm. his, his head is the size of my torso. Yeah, and his actual so. size. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> this 11 is feet scale. tall. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's only like six foot tall, but this is his head. They, 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 the, the camera takes away. Oh, okay. So it's like an NBA Jam big head mode. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. Okay. Great reference. Yeah. <laughs> so um, before we deep dive here a little bit, yeah. um, here's a tiny bit of background, uh, and we're going to talk uh, you know, about um, what's been going on currently in wrestling, which has been very exciting all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, but the Nexus was um, a faction that kind of came out of nowhere. Um, it, was the, it was essentially all of the contestants from one season of NXT, or at that was point, like tough enough. It was like a game show kind yeah. of thing where it's like, okay, here who's are eight, the next? eight rookies who's going to be the next WWE star. 
like tough enough, but with people who have actually done done the deal. It's people who have who are from their developmental. All of them could potentially be brought up to TV. This was their way to kind of ease them in. It was a great uh, concept. And was this oh terribly executed? Terribly executed. It, it was, was like okay, now we'll have a uh, an obstacle course where you have to run around the ring and do tire drills, and then we'll. Uh, that does I, sound terribly executed. I, I know at one point they did the American Gladiators uh, pugil stick. Well, that sounds thing. pretty fun. Yeah, that's great. Uh, everything else was bad. <laughs> they really should just incorporate more of that into uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah, yes. I, I feel like that would probably uh, be terrible. Spoiler, <laughs> like, feel free to spoil this for me. Were any of the people from this Nexus actually better than that Harvard guy who came up through Tough Enough? At least two, I possibly a few of them. three. One of them, I, I, I'm going to say right now, one yeah. of them is a is a future Hall of Famer. Easily, yeah. He is one of the biggest so stars of this generation. Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Brian Danielson, <laughs> Daniel Bryan. You don't like Daniel Bryan? I, I didn't know, get to see much of him. Uh, I didn't see much of him, but it seemed like as soon as I started hearing about him, I was also hearing about the fact that he was gone. So like, yeah. as, as, it seemed like as soon as he finally got over with the fans, yep. he... Yeah, he, he got disappeared. Hurt. We got hurt. Uh, so I don't know much about him other than it seemed like his whole career was six months long. Well, guess what? This week, this week, he was medically cleared to return to the ring, which is why wrestling just got super interesting. I mean, it doesn't really sound like a good idea. Well, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. If he went through, <laughs> it's good for us. He went through a very long. In all yeah, seriousness, it is, yeah, he yeah. went through. He wanted to come back uh, two years ago, like a year ago. Yeah. And um, and he went through uh, you know the, the gambit. I mean, the WWE, and he gives them a lot of credit. And honestly, I do too, because while 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 Vince and and the WWE get a bad rap for for a lot of things in their past, yep. um, they and he said this himself on Thursday. They saw him. They could have just looked at him as Daniel Bryan, the wrestler and the character. And you see, well, hey, look, as long as we shove this guy out on TV, we can make money on him. Yeah. You know, you know, whatever. But he, he credits WWE by saying that when this all happened, they looked at me as Brian Danielson, the person. Like, the young man who was getting married, who got married and was going was to have a baby, you know? Can we just take a pause here for a real Yeah. Quick? His real name is Brian Danielson? Yes. And, and his wrestler name that. is Brian Daniels? Daniel Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Yeah. He wrestled on the Indies and everything. He got uh, popular as the Amer uh, the American Dragon Brian Danielson. Yes. He went by his own name, you know. And then when WWE brought him in, of course they wanted to be able to trademark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they went with Daniel Bryan. A uh, fun piece of internet trivia: uh, NXT, well at that point uh, FCW would often give people like really bad, bland, hard, terrible names. FCW. Uh, Florida Championship Wrestling. Like that Skip was... Sheffield. Like Skip Sheffield. Uh, but there was uh, somebody made a fake roster page and uh, said that his NXT name was going to be Dirk Dickbutt, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it it took off for a little while. And it was kind of great. Dirk every, Dickbutt. Every so often you will see a, a good Dirk Dickbutt post. All right. Real good stuff. Yeah. So yeah. so anyway. Um, but yeah, Daniel Bryan is legit. He's an amazing wrestler. Uh, he was brought in. It's like, oh, you're too small. You can't connect with crowds. And what did they say? Four or five. The B plus a B plus player. Yeah. Four or five years later, it's a, he's so real, he's so genuine, that the crowds could not help but connect with him. There was actually, there was one time when they brought in a bunch of old, like, I think they had, what, 20 people who had won the championship before in the ring. You had just, like, a full gamut of, you know, just, like, Ric Flair, uh, I don't think Stone Cold was there, but, like, Mick Foley, like, all yeah. of, as many big names as you can from, like, way back to now, and the crowd kept chanting for Daniel Bryan. The whole time. Yeah. One of the Royal Rumbles was ruined because they didn't bring out <laughs> Daniel Bryan, and the crowd revolted. Yes. Uh, I mean, and there are so many other it's instances amazing. of that. Yeah. He has mm -hmm. so much of a connection with the fans mm -hmm. because that's what he is. He's 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 your everyman. So he's yeah. like a John Cena type. Except, that's just a joke. That's yeah, a joke. yeah, you're killing me here. <laughs> I was going to say, except dead. that he's not. Yes. yes. Um, done. I got nothing. Oh, okay. Well, what <laughs> you you misread my face. Oh, what I was going to say is, uh, is, is just that with, with him coming back now, um, obviously you know, we're all a little bit nervous for him, but in his agreement with WWE, now that he's returned, I was reading today, um, he has uh, cooperatively you know, a agreed to the fact that after every match, until WWE is comfortable with his health entirely, 
and they may never be. But after every match he has, or anything where he takes any bumps, uh, he will undergo um, uh, impact testing for concussion, for his neck, everything. They said they don't want to take any chances for and, and for him. I mean, how, I don't know how much of wrestling right now is we believe the WWE line, or there's some like kayfabe and stuff. Like, how, how much do we believe like the stories we're getting are the real stories, and how much of it is like? This guy just loves wrestling so much, and that's his whole character. And WWE is going to make sure that this guy can wrestle because he has to. This is um, this seems a thousand this, percent. Genuine. This didn't come from WWE. This information. This came from uh, like insiders. You know, that, that's why I'm asking. Like, how much yeah. is this kayfabe, and how much of it is like? I was kind of afraid that they cleared him so that they could have two guys beat him up and take him out, so he could get his dream taken away. Uh-huh. Which you know, good heel heat. But also, how dare you? That would be some really good idea. That's the meanest thing. <laughs> I don't think you would have agreed. Yeah, that's. Uh, but that is that is what happened. But I'm pretty sure it's to set up a match at WrestleMania. So. Wait, that is what happened? Yeah, like where it's like I've been cleared to wrestle, and then he like fired two guys who were just like tear, the, the old stuff friends up. of his. Yeah. <gasps> right. I know. I know. Damn, Daniel. Yeah, that's as the, the kids would like to say. Uh, yeah, and they just beat the snot out of him. Power bombed him into the ring apron. Good stuff. But you know what? Real quick, while we're talking about that, um, oh, there, 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 are, there is a lot more that's actually been going on um, this week in WWE. This week in WWE, Daniel Bryan gave whatever the opposite of a retirement speech is. Yes! Brock Lesnar got his hands on that rascally rabbit Roman Reigns. Yes! Bray Wyatt ceased to be. Yes! Mustafa Ali earned his place at WrestleMania, where he'll fight Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight Championship. Yes! Tommaso Ciampa finally got the guts to say a few words, so Johnny Gargano punched him in his face! Yes! The Riot Squad was there! Sure! Daniel Bryan also fired Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and they beat him senseless! No! And that's what happened this week in WWE. I gotta tell you. You know how hard it is to find someone who still lives in the 1920s to do your radio spots? And I imagine found it's very that. difficult. Yeah, he's really, really old. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. decrepit. There's a bit of a theme there this week with uh, with Daniel Bryan doing the thing. What, he, did you, was he, it, was he did it, the, the yes and. Who's Daniel Bryan? Uh, he was... <laughs> I, you might know him better as Brian Danielson. You know, ah, Brian, Brian Danielson, right. Uh, do you remember when he just tore the house down with low key? I don't even know. I, I don't actually know if he tore the house down with <laughs> I know that he did a lot of great stuff. Wasn't Loki like, like one of the guys in Raven Squad? Like No, no, that, no was, that was that Lodi. That was Lodi. Lodi. Yes. Ah. Who is Raven's lackey? <laughs> <laughs> no, Loki, Loki was uh, <laughs> he, he's a tiny murder man who will kick you and kill you. This he was fun. WWF is weird. Yeah. Oh he wasn't a WWF. By the way, just so you know, next time you come over, beer's on me, man. I got something in the fridge. What? I got you. All right. All right. Um, uh, is it tight me out during the break? I'll grab one myself. <laughs> anyway. A little self high five. A little self high five there. Um, I'm gonna have some water. Oh, oh, you gonna have yourself some water? I'm not feeling so good. Oh no. Well, we need you to feel better. It's um, okay. My slightly grizzled voice will be good for doing bad Wade Barrett impressions. Well, good because uh, speaking of Wade Barrett, coming up next, uh, we are gonna talk about Wade Barrett, his time in the Nexus. Uh, and uh, and then all things between there, and even a little bit after his uh, WWE career came to an end. Yep. So uh, we'll talk some uh, Nexus, some Wade Barrett, and we've got Greg plus. Greg plus. I know. <laughs> plus. <laughs> I mean, regular plus, Greg. I know Shock Uppercut here cannot wait to step back into the ring for some Smack Talk Showdown <laughs> with Greg. It's going to be pro much time tonight. Please don't make me do it again. I was embarrassed last time. Will I make him As do well. it? Wait, hey, yeah. will, will I make him do it? Yeah, Stay you tuned will. to find yeah. out. Spoiler alert. Probably. We'll be right back with this and more on then. Now? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh. right, right here on WOBU, the ML Underground Radio. I'll be right back. I'm not here. <coughs> yeah. So, Jesse, can I grab you a nothing burger? Uh, if you want. I can't guarantee I'll eat it. Excellent. Good. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, uh. Having not watched, like, once again, I only yeah. watch wrestling, like. I don't watch wrestling, but I only, like, keep up with wrestling with things I figured out to make, like. Right. I read Dead Spin a lot, so, like, Dead Spin right. every now and then touches on, like, the weird stuff happening in that. Yeah. And it seems like Daniel Bryan, like, 
all of a sudden they're like, hey, there's this guy that everyone loves that yeah. is, you know, not going over for some reason. Yeah. With management, not like yeah, this fan. Yeah. Uh, and then it was like, hey, he finally won the championship, and then he's That's not too far and off. What happened? Yeah, was it concussion for us uh, issue? Uh, yes, I believe he got a stinger as well, so he had, like, neck neck issues, but concussion was the bad thing. What's his wrestling style? Uh, he does, like, a lot of, like, knees and stuff, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, like, striker technical type of stuff. Like, he uh, has very hard kicks, uh, very... Like, like Shawn Michaels, kind of? Uh, more, more actually kicking. More, more Steve Blackman than... It's, it's, it's hard for me to believe Steve Blackman's going over real strong with the crowds. <laughs> but it's like if Steve Blackman was the most likable guy. It was like if Steve Blackman and Al Snow were one person, and also Al Snow was the most likable person. Like Mick Foley, but not Mick Foley's, and not any of his characters, just Mick Foley as a person? That yes. kind of likable? Yes. He's a vegan, uh, he is, I, yeah. but like, yeah, he, he wants to do... Well, but that was actually when he first showed up. They did a lot of heel stuff with him. Uh, actually, when he turned heel, where you know, it's like the sort of I'm vegan, I'm better than you, blah blah blah. It was very nice. Uh, oh, I don't want to go too much into Daniel Bryan because that's another episode. Yeah. For sure. But there was a uh, he won the uh, the world championship through Money in the Bank and held on to it longer than he should have. Like he beat Big Show and Mark Henry. And such, and he's like, are those big wins right now? But he's like my size, so like, no, he's not your size. I yeah. saw thick. Is he not like six two? No, he's like maybe like five eight, five nine, if even. Really? Yeah, he's a small dude. <laughs> Three quarters. I'm usually a Nike A guy. When he got, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a bitch. I'm like, uh, like, uh, like me here. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, whatever. This is a vanilla drama quarter. I'm like Chris Tommy. It was it's a comfort. Fantastic. It is <laughs> at water. I don't know the... Cool. Get the vanilla call for 41 drop? Sure. sure. So long story short, uh, he had a match at WrestleMania and lost the belt in 18 seconds. Cheers. And 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Yeah. He turned around, kissed his girlfriend, turned back so around. Did you try uh, Captain Lawrence IPA? Sure. Ran into a finisher. You guys are going to get each other's booty so bad. <laughs> so I'm sorry, he, yeah. he lost, got to WrestleMania and lost in 18 seconds? Yes. And the crowd. I'm not an IPA guy, but that actually has a pretty good flavor to it. All right, that, that was the uh, Billboard chart topping hit. Yeah. We are one by Twelve Stones. Yes. <laughs> it's not really. I, I was gonna say I don't remember that being on the radio. It wasn't. Yeah. That's why. It was a nice little song though. Mm-hmm. Not like the best song. Like I, I am not a big butt rock dude. By Christian so. butt rock band Twelve Stones. That's right. Fun fact. It, it fit them very well. Fun fact. Uh, you guys familiar with the song uh, from uh, Evanescence? I believe it was the first hit. You know, wake me up. Wake me up before you go. Go. No, 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 no. That's it. That's it. That's it. That was Evanescence. Yes. Yes. Evanescence featuring Wham. Yeah. So what happened with that Wham song? What George Michael's did? George Michael's. The guy singing in that song with Evanescence, "Wake Me Up." That was the lead singer of Twelve Stones. So you mean? Blah blah blah. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he can't. Blah, blah. Save me! Yeah, that he can't okay. do. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Yes. Let's talk about the Nexus. So, yes. Um, about eight years ago, the Nexus was the hottest angle on WWE TV, and it wasn't close. Like 2010. Uh, you yeah, 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 yeah. Like and June-ish it, is when they showed up. Yep. And it wasn't. I mean, when they showed up, it wasn't even close. In fact, one of the things I'd like to show you before you leave, well, uh, besides my penis, is gonna be. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I we, we get a sip of beer in you, and it gets real blue on this radio show. <laughs> you did not clear this with me. I'm so sorry, Greg. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What, what, are, you doing with, what are you doing? Stop harassing the town. I'm sorry about that. You know the the current political climate. That's yeah. not okay. I apologize. Greg, too. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Hashtag Greg, too. Uh, what I meant to say was my, my penis. No, that's not true. I'm going to show you. <laughs> oh, no, uh, I little. will take time, uh, take the time tonight to show you the Nexus's debut on Monday Night Raw. It was the most surreal thing at the time that I had ever seen. Okay, on so television. when the Nexus like became a thing, were all of the wrestlers like part of WWF at that point, or were they just part of that uh, NXT thing and then they showed up together? Well, they were all okay. So that's correct. So first of all, NXT, they're all housed under the WWE umbrella. 
But these wrestlers were not on WWE programming outside of the NXT competition. The deal with yeah. NXT was that whoever won uh, got a WWE contract and a championship shot at some point gotcha. on the line. Wade Barrett actually was the one who won. Uh, getting a little ahead. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, but uh, he's he, he's got a, a contract. I'm sure, you know, other people would be brought up as well. You know, that's kind of how it works. And so, but they all showed up as at once as a gang, essentially. And, yeah, and, and, and before before we break in, uh, right into that, did you have, in, in, you know, with your research, did you have backstory before they actually show up here that you wanted to get into, or do you want me to dive right into this? Go for it. Okay, so, so they show up. Um, it's... Uh, it's uh, Monday Night Raw, yep. and um, CM Punk and John Cena uh, are in the midst of, the, of a feud. Okay. Um, all of a sudden, uh, CM Punk is on the outside of the ring, and the uh, he, he gets... What's it, they, but do Wade, they jump him? Uh, Wade Barrett shows up at the top of the ramp. Oh, that's and right. And the crowd is like, hey, that's Wade Barrett. He's from NXT. NXT. And uh, he just stands there. He starts kind of moseying in. And then they show a shot of uh, Michael Tarver in the crowd. He's another guy from NXT. And then they show another guy coming out of the crowd from another direction. And all of a sudden, all eight of them are right all around the ring. All of a sudden, they all and come Michael, over the barricade. Michael Cole's freaking out. And they're surrounding the ring. Mm -hmm. And Michael Cole, for what? For, I have to give him credit. He's doing a great job on play-by-play -play for this. And he's, he's about as good as he can. Yeah, <laughs> he, he really was. Because he sold it that, like, what are these guys doing here right now? And then, and, yeah. and at first, I'm thinking to myself... Okay, it's another like we're bringing guys in and they're gonna do stuff thing. But then what happens next? <laughs> no, but seriously, we're bringing guys in and they're gonna do stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which you know you won't believe what they did instead. <laughs> find out but next week. That is your clickbait article. <laughs> wait, clickbait headline. Wait, we'll find out as Raw rolls on. <laughs> so anyway, it seemed like it was just going to be another angle of okay, guys are going to show up, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be, you know, they're going to, they're going to beat somebody up and they're going to leave. But what actually ends up happening um, was just not even remotely close to what we expected. And to be honest, as a as a as a fan of pro wrestling, nothing like this had been done before on on um, WCW or WWE programming. Ever. What didn't the WCW invasion work kind of that way? Well, here's the big difference. <laughs> okay. There wasn't it. There have been multiple invasion storylines. Like yeah. that's not a new thing. What they did, and what you'll have to see is, um, and Wade Barrett talked about this um, in an interview that he had done after the fact, which was when they were backstage before they went out there. Vince McMahon told Wade Barrett, uh, "Whatever you're going to do out there, it better be good. Otherwise." You will be la you won't last too long around here. So they I had pre-planned. I believe the uh, the idea was tear the place up, like just c cause create chaos. chaos. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And so when they when I when I say they caused chaos, the things that they did. First of all, what people don't realize, uh, you know, until I, I I didn't either until they read this interview. It's one mm -hmm. thing to go out there and say, okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna destroy stuff. They actually meticulously planned amongst themselves as yes. a group. Um, who was going to do what specifically, make sure we do this, this. So the one big thing that happened that had not happened before and made me as a fan uh, feel exactly how they wanted me to feel, which was uncomfortable, mm -hmm. which was the first thing they did, the John Cena's in the ring, right? CM Punk is down on the outside of the ring. So yeah. you think, okay, they're going to come, they're going to get these guys, and they're going to beat them up. The first thing they did is turn... And beat the hell out of the announcers, who were just announcers. Who were they, Michael Cole? And, and, uh, well, they and, they hit Matt Stryker, who had been a wrestler uh, and is kind of a smarmy announcer. He does well for what he does, but he deserved to get punched in the face. It was good to see him get punched in the face. And then Jerry Lawler's all like, "What are you guys doing?" And they just well, beat the tar out of him. Michael Cole goes running the other way. Well, wait, so so that's Michael fine. Cole. That's fine. And we're like, okay, they beat up announcers. We've seen announcers get beat up. Yeah. Then they beat the hell out of. The ring announcer Justin Roberts, who is wasn't a guy that was on TV except for doing ring announcing. He was never involved in storylines. Like they also like like they knocked tore out his me. shirt like off of him, which like was kind of like humiliating in a sense. Like the then what ended up uh, Daniel Bryan ended up actually legitimately getting fired from the company for this uh, uh, because of the complaints that the network got. They actually, uh, so he, Daniel Bryan had a thing where he would do like a, it was called like the yes lock, 
uh, where he would basically, and it was like a cross based thing. Well, he took Justin Roberts' tie off, and Justin Roberts was in on the bit, mm -hmm. but Justin Roberts is down on the floor, and in the midst of what they're doing, yeah. he takes Justin Roberts' tie off of him, puts it around his mouth and neck, and looked like he was ch like choking. Oh no, he like, was choking. Oh, he was choking. Like, the, the tie was still on, and he was just pulling back, and Justin Roberts was like red-faced, and it was horrifying to see. Right, and so we're like, what, like, what the hell's yeah. going on? Then... John Cena's in the ring. Wade Barrett tells them all, get up onto the ring apron. Yep. Right? Yeah. They, they all, they, then John Cena does the thing and like, whoa, guess I gotta do what I gotta do. And Go beat all the guys. Did. They beat the hell out of John Cena. Fine. Yeah. Then, though, the, the thing that was just like, what's going on, and that had never been done, is they destroyed the ring. Not just made the ring collapse kind of thing like they've done, they where they've, they've bumped, but... Um, and they talked about this, Wade Barrett talked about this in his interview, which is that, you know, part of coming up through the ranks as a wrestler from the time you're in India or whatever is you set up rings. And at the end of the night, you tear it down. They've done this a bunch of times, but never on TV had anything in the ring been exposed beneath that blue canvas yeah. unless wrestlers lift up the apron to pull out a weapon. Right. Well, what they did is they undid the ropes on the ring, basically like they were desecrating that 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 site. What city were they in? Do we know? I don't remember off the top of my head. Know. But they 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 just ripped back the blue matting. People like fan general fans didn't know like there's wood boards under there. There's all this stuff like that makes the ring. And they exposed it basically like they were just there to destroy the place. And it was awkward. It was surreal. And especially since you know once you beat up the announcers and Michael Cole runs away. This is all happening in like in silence. Yeah. Like there there is nobody explaining what's going on. Thanks, Steph. Loves the shirt. Yeah. Can you blame her? It's a good shirt. Anyway. It's just a Spanish, no, Spanish feast not, on it. So. Not, not yours. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, no, he makes a great point, actually, that I, that I didn't uh, think of with this, which is, yeah. right, it's one thing when you're hearing the announcer telling you what's going on, yeah. but the announcer beat up, and now all you have is what you see. Uh, they told a great story. Yes. Um, so, did... Uh, do, do, before, I mean, I can tell you some of this that I wanted to share with you, with you guys and share with Greg, but did you want to touch on something before? Because uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Nexus debut, and I'll keep it brief, as brief as I can. Okay. We talk a little bit about uh, Wade Barrett. Uh, he was legitimately a bare-knuckle boxer in England in his 20s. Uh, that was the way he just kind of got some extra money. Mm -hmm. Apparently, at one point, he won a big, uh, a big prize, and somebody tried to steal it from him, stabbed him. With like an eight-inch knife, I believe. Yes, that's a big knife. A big knife, and he uh, he didn't stab him enough, so he beat the tar out of the guy, kept the money, <laughs> but he's got like a good scar now. Uh, Where's also, the scar? Uh, I don't actually know. Oh, so it's but they remind him that the past is real. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dolph Ziggler. Previous episode. Yeah. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> Uh, and apparently he also had a uh, degree in marine biology. But that is neither here nor there. I just really like that that's the case. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, talk fighting Nexus. style for Wade Barrett, kind of like a Steven Regal sort of thing? He was a brawler. Yeah, a uh, less technical Regal. Just, he he was very WWE style, where, like, he would do all of the stuff and he'd do it well, but he didn't do the high flying, he didn't do, you know, like, terribly proficient striking or technical stuff. He just did everything very well. It was just good. So what I just what I wanted to mention quickly you. about their debut. Yeah. Um, I already mentioned to you how they were very meticulous with their planning and things like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, based on what Vince had said, you know, and the quote was, uh, "Better make this good because if it isn't, uh, if it isn't good, you guys will be around for very long." And he said, "So that's kind of that was kind of hanging over uh, hanging over us." You know, when we go out there, and I'm thinking that uh, when we're out there and, uh, you know, attacking the ring, smashing, smashing things up, we were so in the zone that we weren't really paying att much attention to the reaction or the atmosphere. It's kind of one of those things where when you're in the moment, you almost hear nothing. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. And he said that, uh, you know, uh, they were so focused on, like, you do this, you do this, you do this, and wanting to make sure that they didn't screw it up. By the time that uh, they went to the back, they hadn't actually absorbed any of what was happening around them. Um, when they, but when they got to the back, and I don't know if you know this, Ooh. when they got to the back, uh, as soon as they came back through the, uh, to, through the backstage area, um, they were practically, uh, and essentially given a standing ovation by the locker room. All of the guys, uh, that were working there that night, uh, they were really blown away by what that, 
those young rookies, uh, yeah. you know, had done. And um, uh, and I wanted to mention that you know the group, this group, the Nexus, just to give you some perspective, um, they wreaked havoc as rookies on the WWE roster from top to bottom. They destroyed guys like uh, Bret Hart, who had returned, uh, Chris Jericho, Edge, CM Punk, John Cena. I mentioned referees, TV announcers. You know, it was it was intense. I'm sorry, Bret Hart came back briefly. Yes, huh. he came back. Uh, him and Shawn Michaels shook hands. He was a commissioner for a little while. Uh, won the U.S. title, and then uh, I believe uh, Daniel Bryan won the U.S. title somewhere. Oh, by the way, Daniel Bryan did get hired back. Don't worry. I picked up on that. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the Nexus was running, you know, just rough shot, and yes. they were poised to have a very long uh, run until SummerSlam well, they, 2010. If I can, there was a pay-per-view called Fatal Four Way, where the main event was a Fatal Four Way, because they had <laughs> run out of. They have run out of good titles. What like, exactly is a fatal four-way? Do all four wrestlers die, or is it just the winner dies? You know, you would think it was one or the other. It's just four people fighting. <laughs> and it is very deadly. Because there's four people There was also fighting. a video called Deadly Games, no fatal four-way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but that was a Deadly Games match, I'm sure. So, but anyway, uh, the main event, uh, championship match, people fighting, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the Nexus showed up in the middle of that match, just started beating the tar out of everyone, and uh, Sheamus uh, got a uh, shock win, and then ran like a like a scared just child. A, it just was a great. Quick, very quick side note. Yes. Who's the worst member of the Nexus? Michael Tarver. No question. Yeah, and then David Otunga, I would say. Yeah. He was never, he was never a great wrestler. Was he, it Otunga like an Irish name, like Otunga, or Otunga like a Samoan? It was name. Mr. Jennifer Hudson. Uh, yeah, the, he married Jennifer Hudson. He was on a uh, season of I Love New York, which is, yeah, but yeah, uh, super cut black gentleman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I always wanted better. Oh, and actually a real life lawyer. Like, he has, he has Good for him. Yeah. You are a sexy beast. That's true. I've noticed that about myself. Hmm. Yep. Well, there you go. <laughs> now you know. I yes. know he's half the battle. Is it a lady or a man? That's a, that would be Stephanie Turner. Yes, yeah, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got, oh, we've got one of the tech group fans. <laughs> Available for bar mitzvahs. Yes. Bat Maybe. mitzvahs. Oh, okay, yes. And also, that's still kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so um, in 2010, um, the Nexus has been booked uh, extremely well. Oh, God. Uh, having run uh, through just about everyone and, uh, and anything that crossed their path, uh, all of that changed after John Cena eliminated Justin Gabriel and Nexus leader Wade Barrett, uh, despite a two-on-one disadvantage to capture the victory for Team WWE at SummerSlam in a seven-on-seven -seven elimination style tag match. Yeah. They did the sort of like, this is where it all ends, we'll have the best WWE guys and Bret Hart. And also, uh, the be I believe R-Truth was also on that team. He was, and that's also where Which Daniel Bryan returned. <laughs> yes. Which was a real nice thing, because The Miz uh, is, a, is a cocky SOB. He was like, I'll make my decision whether I want to be on your team or not uh, on the day. Oh, and he came out. And he came out because they needed a team member. So it was the Nexus heel or yeah. heel. face? Uh, heel. 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 Super heel, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, they needed, an, they needed a seventh member. And the Miz was like, yeah, you know what? I'll get back to you guys. You know, because they're like, listen, we need to stop these guys. They're, they're, they're beating everybody up. And he's being cocky. So SummerSlam, Miz, Miz comes out. So John Cena and everybody, yeah. he's like, all right, guys, you know what? You need me. I know you need me. I think I'll, uh, I'll help you guys out this time. His and music like, plays. His music starts coming out. out. John Cena's like, no. Like, you think we're going to wait for the last minute to see if you wanted to do this or not? We needed to get a seventh member. Here's Daniel Bryan. Oh, Daniel Bryan turns against the Nexus? Yes. yes. Yeah, he came back as, like, the hero of the WWE. Partly because he was fired and he was somewhat loved on NXT because he was like the lovable underdog there. Which like I got I got great heart, but oh and also his pro was the Miz, which was a nice bit of turnabout. That ended uh, up becoming a feud. No? Yes, and so it was the like I'm the best wrestler in the world, and the Miz is like I'm gonna teach you how to be a good wrestler, and it's hilarious because the Miz was not the best wrestler. The Miz wasn't a good wrestler. He's he's very good now. He wasn't as good then. He was competent. Yes. But Daniel Bryan was Daniel Bryan. Like He was legit. Like If you had to say like who was the best wrestler in the world right now, he'd be on the top three for anybody's list. Who knows. Wait, I thought you said he's a striker. Yep. 
But I mean, just as far as like in ring telling stories and big t- like technical. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, he, I gotcha. he's he's keep in mind super that he's been, good. Keep in mind he's been out of the ring for two years and is still one of the best in the world. Yeah, just from what we've seen. Uh, hey, 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 hey. I missed all the Daniel Bryan stuff. I'm probably skeptical of this Daniel Bryan. Here, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, the next time we know that you're going to be on the show, we're going to call an audible on whatever the white tornado Clicky Von Wheeler says. Mm. And uh, yeah, Just keep saying that name. It's really going to go over. Yeah. And uh, and uh, <laughs> we are going to do a Daniel Bryan show for, uh, for, for, for Mr. Greg. I feel like this is already the Daniel Bryan show because <laughs> so. we talked about him so much. But anyway. Talk about Wade Barrett. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so anyway... Uh, there's yeah. a whole story that we may not have time for tonight that goes into the, uh, the, the you know, the, the unfortunate situation. That wasn't, SummerSlam wasn't supposed to end like that. John Cena called an audible. Fucking John Cena. Can I say fucking on the radio? Um, you can't. Freaking John Cena. I'm trying to keep things PG. <laughs> I, want, I want it to be nice, but. Freaking John Cena. You can, you can say what you want, so nobody's going to care. Yeah, it had, it, they were, they were almost sure that, you know, they were going to go over and get this big victory over Team WWE, and then continue their storyline. Yeah. And it was abruptly cut short when John Cena's like, no, you know what these guys need? Listen, I'll get this one, and then they'll get it back later. And it, it killed them. It killed the Nexus. Yeah, because that was that was sort of the one where it's like, we are going to prove that we belong here. And it proved that they did not... They, didn't, John they were Cena not dominant. Just, just crapped all over them. Yeah. WWE and that is sucks, better. honestly. Like, like, to this day, yeah. that was, I think, one of the... One of the worst. Yeah. At that point, I believe uh, WWE's done. one of them got hurt mm-hmm. not too long after. They kicked one of the members out because they were the weak link. It their numbers dwindled and it it was super duper not a thing. Within months, it was gone. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over to you now for uh, for a bit and uh, uh, talk to us a little bit more about um, Bad News Barrett because I'm gonna come back to uh, to it at the end of this. I'm sorry, his name is Bad News Barrett. He came eventually. It that was. was a gimmick. Yes, I, I like I, I like. Oh, it. dude, oh. that was a great gimmick. You are going to like Bad News Barrett. All right. He, he's your kind of let's boy. Hear, let's hear something. <laughs> All right. Uh, looking through uh, his history in WWE, and I, I am shocked to look back and see this, uh, he won the Intercontinental Championship five times All and right. did not even sniff another title. Tag uh, team? Nope. U.S.? Nope. Nope. Uh, he actually, like, because... Hardcore? That yeah, wasn't around then. Because... ECW? Also not around then. Because he won NXT, he got a title shot against the champ, who I believe ended up being John Cena. Actually, was it Randy Orton? Yeah, you know what? It was Randy Orton. Because they did a whole deal where John Cena had to join the Nexus if he lost a match. And he lost the match, so he had to join the Nexus and do whatever Wade Barrett said. And it's like, You're if, so dumb. If, if I don't win this match uh, against Randy Orton, you're going to be fired. And so he won by... John Cena attacked him, and he won by DQ. And... So technically he won, but he didn't become ah, champion. Ah. That guy's a jerk. John Cena? Yeah. Yeah. And then... Yeah. yeah. He's full he, of suck. And then he lost another match, and he did get fired. But then, when you're fired, that just means you come back and keep fighting the guys who beat you up, and then you get a match with them. Unless you get fired for choking a guy. Yes. With a tie. With a tie. Yeah, because kids can emulate that, and that's bad news. Except for the rest of the choking that they do on the show. Yes. Huh? Funny thing, <laughs> I'm a Sour Patch Kid because I'm a grown ass man. Go right ahead. Oh, no, I'm good. Thanks, good. Man. John Cena <laughs> has one of the worst submission holds in wrestling. He does I didn't a, even know he was a submission guy. No, he's not. He does uh, an STF, which I remember a step over toe hold face lock. Okay. Like kind of break by the legs, grab the head, and pull back. When they weren't when they weren't PG, yeah. it was the STFU. Oh, that's right. Because he he's was, so clever. He was the doctor of thugonomics. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I, uh, but. He, if this is your head, he leaves like inches around it. It's garbage. It looks so bad. People have to be like, oh my god, and he's just hold his arms like this, like oh no, like trying to push your head against it so it looks like he's pulling back. And his excuse is always, oh, but kids could emulate it and it'd be bad. It's like, dude, kids can emulate throwing throwing a dude off your shoulders. That would hurt them just as much as, a, you know, kind of grabbing their head real bad. It's just dumb. It's it's been a weak spot in his game forever, especially since a lot of people tap out to that junk. Do they really? Yeah. But don't worry, wins matches. Because someday, in the not too distant future, he's gonna break Ric Flair's record of, uh, of what? WWE champion world championships. Yeah, Ric Flair. Ric is... Flair has the WWE championship record. No. Yeah. Oh yes, well, just as far world champion. World championships. They, Sixteen time. Yeah. They, they count the old WWE oh, they... ones. Yeah. Ah, I see. Yeah. 
At that time. He's recognized at having 16. John Cena's at 16. It's kind of inevitable that he'll win 17th at some point. I kind of hope he doesn't, but I he also would... get an aneurysm. I had hoped that he would never tie it, and he just tied it like nothing. So, let's I not wish he could. upon the guy. He's a very nice dude. Right. He's just kind of... Maybe he'll he, break a femur uh, and how about, wrestling. This? how about this? How about this? Now I like. How about this? We're not wishing <coughs> that he... Uh, we're not wishing an aneurysm on him, but we're not not wishing... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so the Nexus fell apart. Uh, he started another group called the Core, with two mm. R's in it. It had a really bad. Like, Did it have an E too? Or yeah, C O R R E. Core. They were. It was him, two guys from the Nexus, and a fourth guy who they were trying to give a rub to. Okay. Uh, huge black dude named Ezekiel Jackson. All right. Which impressive looking. Didn't really do much, but. Sometimes you don't need to do much if the booking's good, but it's 2011 WWE, the booking's not good. So, the, that whole thing, just, just super garbage. Uh, he was in the Money in the Bank match that Daniel Bryan won. I'm sorry, that, that should be a wrestler gimmick, like the name of Super, super garbage. garbage. That should have been a, a, a cruiserweight name. Yes. It's just, just Junkyard Dark's theme. Yeah, I realize it's a dark <laughs> I thought, honestly thought I might have had a stroke. I wasn't sure what's going on. I just, I just go to your dog What? Oh, no. I was so excited to make a Junkyard Dog reference. That oh. I, I slurred my way through it. Oh, man, I wish you'd gotten that out. It would be really good. <laughs> uh, and then in October of 2011, about a year later, uh, he declares that all these people are holding him back. There's going to be a Barrett Barrage. That's right, friend is British. That's kind of how he talked, except I hated this except good. It was just him being kind of mean, and he changed... His finisher was uh, the Wasteland, which was, I got you on my shoulders, I grab you by an arm and a leg, and I slam you down. It's good. Slam on the back of the stomach. Reverse slow and drop. Yeah, but you don't fall with it, so it's kind of different. Right. Yeah, uh, I gotcha. Apparently named after one of the places he used to uh, bare-knuckle brawl, and often misheard as Wade Slam... Which is kind of great. <laughs> I wish it was called the Wade Slam. <laughs> I never heard it like that. <laughs> it's great. But still. Uh, but he changed his finisher from that to a uh, an elbow, which is nice. That is a believable knockout. Originally, yeah, I'm, I'm it, a fan of that. He called it the souvenir elbow. He would do a, uh, a grapevine of the, the guy's own neck, spin him out, and then pull him back in and hit him with an elbow. It was too complicated, so Ooh. he just started hitting him with an elbow. First it was the souvenir, and then he started calling it the bull hammer. He would turn his uh, elbow pad. turn his elbow pad inside out from black to red, and then start going like this with his arm, just circles. <laughs> and that's how you need to avoid his elbow for the up. next twenty seconds. He was tuning up the accordion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Wade Barrett, definitely one of the guys who just. I, I can't believe he wasn't world champion at some point. He's, he had oh, he's never been champ? No. He was IC champ five times. Oh, right. Uh, at WrestleMania 29, the one we were at, because it was in Jersey. Uh, New he, Jersey? The newest. He uh, he actually... The newest Jersey. He faced The Miz in a pre-show match. I forgot about this. And lost the title, only to win it back the next night. And everybody just went, why would you do that? Why would, why would you... Like a pre-show match? Yeah. They have a... And the Miz was like, I win it, and then Wade Barrett won it right back. It's like, why even, why even do that? Wait, that's like canon. They had him lose the title off yeah. TV. Oh no, it was on TV. They, the pre-show was aired. It's oh. just not part of the pay-per-view. Okay. Like they have it like an hour or two of free stuff that they would have on USA or YouTube or whatever. Gotcha. Okay. No, I thought you were saying it was like the oh, stuff no. that doesn't go on that TV. I was like, that's sad. weird. That would be really sad. <laughs> uh, this is a whole other can of worms, but the Intercontinental title kind of is, seems cursed. Yeah, you mentioned that last time. I refuse to believe that the Intercontinental Championship is the best one. If if nothing else, when you when you have the championship, and this goes for a lot of the championships, but I see more than any of them, you lose every match that you have except title matches, which just makes you look like super garbage, and it mm. makes your opponent look like garbage because they can't even win the championship from you. That you know that cruiserweight wrestler, super garbage that I was talking about a few minutes ago. Yeah, Junkyard Dirt. <laughs> it makes you makes you look like John Carrey dog. It's great. Sir Stroke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. All right. Yes. Uh, let's see. What else do I have in my notes? Uh, he had a mini feud with Bo Dallas. Uh, yeah, that's not a wrestler. No. That's uh, someone's dog. It's the uh, the the son of IRS. 
Really? Yeah. He had he had a son. His gimmick well, at first was I smile real big, and then they realized that's not a gimmick. Nope. And then they realized people didn't like him, so his gimmick was I smile really big and you all love me. Shower me with booze, which is a good gimmick. Booze, booze, and actually they uh, this is like super tiny thing, but in uh, NXT after it was a game show and when it was developmental, they would they had the screens set up in such a way that it would say Bo and it would say Bo again, and they put they always seemed to make the camera so that it would show the B O and then the other O and it would just say Boo. I don't know if that was intentional, but it happened like all the time, and I loved it every time. <laughs> Boo Dallas. Uh, Wait, was that really his only gimmick? Just my I smile's think. weird. Uh, and then then he, he held be- his hand up like this and said, uh, "You you you believe." Yeah, he became a, a, a like delusionally self healthy where he felt like he was going to make the world a better place, and everybody was like, "No, you're the worst," and it was kind of great. He actually he actually made that. Work. All right. But then he came to the, like, WWE proper, and they did nothing with him. Mm. Because his brother is, is Bray Wyatt. That's what they do. Yes. IRS is pretty great. Yeah. He has good sons. He had good sons. He's only paying taxes. Ah! Oh, God. Ah! 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 That's what he did. Yeah. I got I got a lot of uh, like real small potatoes on this list. Ready? Rapid fire. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, he lost to Curtis Axel at Payback. Uh, I don't know son, that is. son of Mr. Perfect. Yes. <gasps> yes. Not as good as you would think. Although, funny enough, him and Bo Dallas uh, seem to be joined uh, co- cosmically at the hip. Like, they keep, like, coming together as, like, as a tag team. Does he look like Mr. Perfect? Here's the thing. Let, yeah. me, let, me, let me tell you something. I'm going to give you the real skinny on, on, on Curtis Axel, okay? Curtis Axel is a great wrestler with a yeah. terrible receding hairline. He's all right. He's good enough. He's good enough that The Rock will only trade Wait, how, him. Mr. Perfect kind of had a receiving hairline. Did, did, did. He had a mullet, though. He did. It's so like, if he grew out the back here, it'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and he was also in the Money in the Bank match that Damian Sandow won, which that is, again, a whole other can of worms. Damian Sandow. He was, a, he was an intellectual. I love that guy. The intellectual savior of the masses. Yes. Uh, I he, do love an intellectual heel. I, I just assume this guy's a heel because his name is oh, Damian. He, he he held the the microphone like it was a wine glass. It was beautiful. I th- I feel like any but any time you can hold the microphone in a different way, you are doing your job. You're doing a better job than most. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that that match was very frustrating to me for reasons I'm not going to go into. Uh, but he was also there. Uh, he was supposed to shave Daniel Bryan for a corporate makeover. And uh, got shaved instead. To be fair, Daniel Bryan's beard is... It got real bad, yeah. It's bad. Yeah. And then we come to Bad News Barrett. Uh, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. (laughs) That was his thing. (laughs) It was awesome. (laughs) And I had something to say about that then too later. He was either not on TV or was in that place where he showed up on TV and did nothing and nobody cared. He was hurt. Was he? Oh, I yeah. wasn't sure if he was hurt or not. For when, when, when I just want to say, when that gimmick started, when that whole Bad News Barrett thing started, they mm-hmm. wanted to get him back on TV. He wanted to get back on TV, and he had to come up with a way and a gimmick to get back on TV, get people interested in him, and then eventually, when he was healthy, he would wrestle again based on the heat that he got. Yes, that was Bad News Barrett. He was yes. hurt. There was a web show on WWE.com, possibly YouTube as well, uh, called the JBL and Cole Show. I didn't watch it. I probably should have, because looking back at some of the clips, there was some, some good silly stuff there, where it's like, okay, uh, this is not stuff that is canon at all, so we're just going to have fun with our friends, essentially. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the old uh, Gorilla Monsoon Bobby Heaney bits. Mm. Like, in that aspect. I can used to have. Uh, but he developed the Bad News Barrett character there. He would just show up to people, and he'd say, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, and then he would tell them something bad. I also watched a very good clip where somebody convinced him to be Good News Barrett. <laughs> and he was like, I'm afraid I've got some good news. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean levels, uh, you know, are sinking today. Or something, you know, kind of... And then it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, no, he told CM Punk that there was uh, there was cake at, in catering. And then CM Punk was like, all right. Good <laughs> News Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a real nice thing. Uh, so, yeah, he showed up. Uh, he had his own little podium mm-hmm. uh, with uh, hashtag BNB signs on it. And uh, it is, I'm afraid I got some bad news. Uh, people in this arena are terrible and fat. <laughs> I like yeah. it when they make fun of the rubes. 
Thanksgiving was last week, so you're all bloated and constipated from eating too much turkey. Ha 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 ha. And then a big thing that says Bad News Barrett would just pop onto the screen. The Wait, that's where that's, that's the extent of being bad news? Just Yes. You guys he, are fat? Pretty much. He, he didn't go too deep, but it was very good. The fun is in the escalation. Uh-huh. Uh, after that, he started getting... He got a grander podium at the... Like, it used to be kind of down by the ring. And then he got a better one up on the stage, and they gave him a gavel. So he just, Excuse me, cunk, cunk, cunk. Could I have some decorum, please? <laughs> yes. Something, something going well, but I'm afraid I've got some bad news. And he's just getting more into it. It's real good stuff. Then they put him on a cherry picker. Uh, and oh, yeah. they just had him uh, just standing at the podium, and then it would rise about 12 feet in the air, and he would literally look down on the crowd. <laughs> Chef's kiss. Beautiful <laughs> it's, stuff. It's great. Yes. And unfortunately, none of that transferred into him being a successful in-ring competitor. Uh, he, he believes, and I believe this as well, that he was not supposed to be as popular as he was because he's a heel, and people kind of loved him because he was great at it. And so he got popular, and they had to do anything they could to try to knock him back down to where they wanted him to be. So they took away his catchphrase, they had him lose constantly, and it was just an all-around bad time. Mm. Yeah. So, womp womp. Yeah, so... That's essentially the, the the story of Wade Barrett. Yeah, in a nutshell. And I and before we, uh, I know we're, uh, we're cutting it close here on time, but yeah. Um, if you don't have, did you have anything else that you wanted to still throw in? I, uh, just stuff from after. Okay. But I believe you're going to go into that as well. Well, I do, yeah. I, so basically, I had some stuff I wanted to read, and I'll I'll make it as brief as I can. All right. You know, follow me here, but um. Uh, December. This is from an interview with uh, SportsIllustrated.com's Extra Mustard section of their site. Um, and uh, this is from December 19th, 2016. Um, and he said that uh, Bad News Barrett was a really fun time. Uh, the, the reactions from the crowd I was getting uh, were, really speak, uh, were really about my speaking and my portrayal of the character rather than my in-ring work. You can even go back to the Nexus era when I was cutting promos every single night. People were really hanging on my every word. And I was really dictating a lot of the shows uh, that we were doing. I've always had the confidence in my performance ability and my ability in character or my ability to speak in character. One of the most exciting parts of the Nexus and the Bad News Barrett eras where I had a lot of influence in the character and a lot of influence in, uh, on how I was going to portray myself. I always wanted to be the bad guy. Um, there was a point in my career where I felt WWE should have turned that and made me the good guy during the Bad News Barrett run when I was getting such positive reactions. They made a mistake, I believe they made a mistake in not turning me into a babyface. Um, but that's water under the bridge at this point. Um, and his real name is Stu Bennett. Um, he says Bennett loved uh, that his creativity was allowed to flourish in the Bad News Barrett role, um, but he was denied much of that creative liberty when he eventually became King Barrett after he won the King of the Ring. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of um, just cut him off of the knees at that point. And he said, when I, when, I, when I became King Barrett, the influence that I had in the character was taken away. I was told, this is your outfit. Here is your promo that you have to say word for word. And any time I tried to tweak the storyline because I thought it wasn't working or because it wasn't me, I was flat, flatly denied. He literally fought with uh, with R Truth over. I don't know who R Truth is. Uh, do you remember K Quick? I don't remember K Quick. He was he was around back in your days. I uh, just he's kind of a joke. Let's go with that. Mindy loved Bad News Barrett, by yes. the way. Uh, a little imp- late to imp- that. Pro- important artist. note about Bad News Barrett because my, he he is one of my wife's favorite wrestlers. Uh, he used to come out wearing a blazer over his shoulders, and then at the right part of his his music, he would pop it off, and then my wife would go, Ooh. <laughs> So, I don't know how important that bit is. But it was a really nice flourish. He also eventually upgraded it to like just a fancy cool cape, and it was real nice. And he said, uh, the lack of control over my career at that point uh, reduced my passion more than anything. Is he still employed by the WWF? No, he left. Uh, he left uh, a few years a few years ago. Yeah, it uh, was uh, what 2015, I believe. Yes, 2015. Yep. He right says, after uh, WrestleMania. For the first time in my life, at that point, I was questioning why I was even getting out of bed and going to work. I wasn't really enjoying anything, um, and I wasn't motiva- It wasn't motivating me at all. Um, for that reason, I made the decision that I couldn't re-sign a contract and continue for three more years when I knew uh, nothing was going to change. Um, my choice was to take the paycheck and accept that I was probably going to get the same kind of creative that, uh, that I'd had for the last couple of years, or alternatively to walk away and look for something else. So I decided to do the latter. 
Um, I've always been smart with my money and I saved a lot during my time with the WWE. I'm not in a position where I'm living paycheck to paycheck and I can afford to explore other avenues. And then I have some things real quick that I want to talk about life after wrestling for him. Mm -hmm. But you, you had something you want to say. Uh, when he was feuding with R-Truth, uh, R-Truth would literally come out with a paper crown and a plunger and be like, I'm the king! Yeah, I believe he had a towel cape. It was real garbage. And then R-Truth would be. That is how low things had sunk for him. Poor it was Wade like Barrett. Poor Wade Barrett, yeah. Also, I felt so bad for that man. I definitely brought the card game up here, and I don't know where it mm. went. You did not. You left it on the couch downstairs. I left it on the couch downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are pretty much out of time. <laughs> you don't want to cut that promo. You're all correct. Right. Well, all right. So real quick, life after wrestling. We'll do um, there is nothing, he says, uh, going back to that interview quickly, because I thought it was really interesting. He says, uh, you know, there's nothing more terrifying than lying in the ring and feeling like your hand has gone numb. Um, uh, in, in 2015, when I, uh, when I had, had, uh, had my first stinger, my whole arm went numb, uh, but the feeling returned about a minute later, and I was able to finish the match. And I immediately thought of uh, uh, another wrestler named Tyson Kidd, who suffered a terrible neck injury. Um, uh, yeah, right around the time he did this interview, okay. um, and in many uh, in many respects, uh, Tyson Kidd was lucky to survive. Now, many people don't realize how dangerous professional wrestling is. People can get seriously injured and even paralyzed. That's when I came to the realization that I didn't want to put my body on the line doing something that I that wasn't even inspiring me. So I decided to move my career in a different direction. Uh, but then, what I thought was great, he said, of all the aspects of the wrestling industry that I don't miss, the one thing that I do miss more than anything is. Is it the fans? The groupies. <laughs> Sitting in the locker room with the guys and shooting the breeze. Oh, making look at joke, that. Make, yeah. Making jokes and having the banter of the locker room is really unique, and that's something I really miss. I'm still in touch with a lot of the guys from the locker room, and I still hang out and text with a lot of them, but there's something that you can't replicate about the locker room. It's a very unique thing, and it's certainly something I miss. Bennett later admitted that uh, he's a bit of a loner when it, he was a bit of a loner when it came to travel, but he was really tight with guys like Cody Rhodes, Heath Slater, and Bray Wyatt. Um, as well as, uh, you know, he tended to gravitate towards his fellow Europeans like Neville, Cesaro, and uh, Alberto Del Rio and Rusev. Generally speaking, he says, if a guy liked soccer, uh, I'd become very good friends with him. Uh, that's something that I missed from the UK, so a lot of times I'd sit down with guys like Alberto Del Rio to watch Real Madrid play, or I'd sit down with Rusev and we'd just talk football. 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 So. That's cool. Yes. So yeah, he did... A small bit of film work. He did a couple of films with WWE. Right. Uh, <laughs> and a couple of uh, independent British deals. I believe he's still doing that. And he, in the last couple of months, uh, showed back up as a an on-screen commissioner type for a smaller British fed uh, called That's Defiant cool. Wrestling. So, I was glad to see him again and hear that voice. Because he really does have just, just a beautiful voice. He does? Yeah. He does. Hey, uh... Uh, before we spin the wheel here, yes, actually, we should. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm about to bring a very special guest onto the show. He's a reoccurring guest. But first, Greg, I know it was kind of fast-paced. I really hope you had a great time. Of course I did. It was great to have you back here. Mm -hmm. Next time that you're here, we'll talk some Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. Who's Daniel Bryan? Maybe. I feel like we should just stick to the wheel. He'll come up. Clicky Von Wheeler? He's the next guy on the Nexus. Okay. Uh... Uh, but unless, the other thing is, we will start the next show with a Smack Talk Showdown face-off between you guys. <laughs> Starting it up. Okay. Jesse's so excited. Here's the thing, right? It's all about the climb. You know, you gotta, you gotta keep climbing until you reach that, that victory. And so eventually, I believe Jesse will beat you in, <laughs> nope. in cutting a promo or will die trying. <laughs> Chaos is a ladder and I'm ready to climb it. You know what this is? He's scared to face you one on one. <laughs> He's scared to go into the I'm not into the octagon with Greg. <laughs> it's an octagon now. We're doing MMA. Yep. You know who's not scared? The White Tornado, Clicky Von Wheeler. Oh my God. It's good stuff. Would you like to spin Clicky Von Wheeler for I'd next love week's to spin topic? With Clicky Von Wheeler. Give it a good one. Uh, so fluid. So satisfied. Is that made out of wood? Yep. Nice. It's good stuff. Yeah. Clicky Von Wheeler. Next show, it's going to be In, in your, your house. house. Do you remember the In Your House pay-per-views? Uh, they actually gave away a house back in the 90s. Did they really give away a house? That was yeah. the first one, yeah. I thought it was like a pay-per-view that took place in a house. I just found no. it again. 
Yeah, back before they had uh, monthly pay-per-views, that was how they had monthly pay-per-views. In your house! Oh, little little live specialty pay-per-view deals. But uh, this is our spot on the wheel where we discuss uh, where you're going to look into a pay-per-view, uh, talk about a match or two from it, uh -huh. and it's going to be a good time. We actually decided what those pay-per-views are going to be, wrote them down somewhere. We don't know what they are. Oh my god. We'll find that paper, though, and we will let you this know. This is a high-class operation you guys are on. That's right. We write things down on paper. I'm not saying it's high-class. I'm not even saying it's class. It's definitely something. It's, I want to thank some of the letters. This is an operation you guys are on. Yes, I want to thank Greg. 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 I didn't realize we were going to have a dance like the synchronized dance. Maybe it's just Greg. Yeah. Maybe it's just Greg. Yeah. Maybe it's not a... Greg at all. Yeah. Greg. <laughs> Greg. Greg, thank you so much for coming thank on the show. Me. It's great to see you again. <laughs> we are gonna get out of here. Uh, this has been then, now, whenever, and uh, uh, follow us on the Facebook, Facebook.com/slash <coughs> then. Now, whatever, yes. When? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, we're also on Twitter, at then, now, whenever. Uh, we, we sure could, are. We could use some love there. At then, now, whenever. Then, now, whenever, which is a real pain, because it's double N, double W. Well, we're going to get out of here. <laughs> yes. Uh, tune in next week, where we will be talking about uh, a pair of pay-per-views. One of them was a Money in the Bank. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be good. We're going to get the hell out of here. This yes. is Park Life. You're listening to Then Now Whenever, and uh, we'll be back next week, 9 o'clock, right here on the Underground Radio.